Uh, I'm Paul Turner, I'm one of the wardens in the Forest and Ard uh, Reserve up in Caithness in Sutherland. I mean, the, the reserve itself, 21,000 hectares roughly, uh, so hectares are about the size of a rugby pitch. So 21,000 rugby pitches. Um, and the reserve, the, the Forest and Ard Flows Reserve, is only a small part of the flow country, so the area that's kind of recognised as, as being of, of, of sort of international importance for blanket bog habitat. Uh, you can be wandering around on uh, natural uh, blanket bog, beautiful pool systems, and you can probably only see a small fraction of those pool systems around you, so maybe 10 or 12 pools. But if you get that aerial view, you suddenly realise that there are literally hundreds, if, if not thousands, for some of these bigger pool systems, of pools right out there. Uh, and when you see the, the water, uh, uh, the, the light hitting it, uh, and I've seen them in icy conditions in the winter with snow on them, and I've seen them in the, the middle of summer with dragonflies and uh, diving beetles and, and newts uh, and all the, the, the beautiful wee flowers that go with them. Uh, they're incredible places, uh, but you, you just don't realise that they're there. We're currently out in the sort of western part of the reserve, um, between two of the old uh, forestry compartments uh, that have been kind of restored over the last sort of 15 to 20 years. As part of the Flows to the Future project that we had been doing for the sort of last five, six years, um, we have been removing the trees uh, as, the, as the first stage. The bit immediately behind me uh, is undergoing restoration uh, and has uh, it started about five or six years ago. It, it doesn't look nice to start with, uh, it's, it's impossible, you can't wave a magic wand and suddenly make something that was a, 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 a non-native uh, planta uh, corn for plantation into blanket bog again. Uh, there, there has to be a transformative process uh, and that does take time and there is a period where uh, it does look uh, pretty, pretty knackered. Um, but um, it's understanding that over a period of time uh, it will restore itself back. I mean, these pool systems and locks are, are the big wet areas, uh, and it's that water that uh, that promotes sphagnum, and the sphagnum that kind of, uh, along with the water, uh, is, is what really you end up with the, the peat from that. So uh, there's no decomposition of, of organic materials because it is waterlogged, uh, and it's that combination of water uh, and, and sphagnum that allows peat to develop and basically sort of locks up all that carbon. Uh, so from a carbon point of view, that's exactly what we want and um, from a biodiversity point of view removing the trees uh, promotes the landscape for peatland waders uh, things like golden plover and dunlin which have, have, have kind of uh, evolved uh, in these open landscapes uh, and, and they become scared of these uh, these forestry edges uh, there's a, an effect called the edge effect uh, and it's a, a negative shadow effect that's caused by these plantations on peatland waders and it scares them away from the edges and so the areas that they effectively use uh, kind of shrink down and down and if we can remove these these trees and these edges then it promotes more areas for them to be able to breed. It, 
it, it's a beautiful landscape, but it's very small scale stuff. You have to really look, uh, and as the, the, the sort of catch in for the, the flows project is the, the more you look, the more you see, and that is perfect description for the flow country and the blanket bog. You need to take that time to look, and if you do, then you quite often see more than you expect. It's a wee bit of a, well, it's often been described as a bit of a Marmite landscape. You can either like it or you don't. Uh, it's a harder landscape to understand than, than somewhere that's maybe like native woodland or even Caledonian pine forest. Or, uh, it, it, it's, it's a landscape that seems to be empty when you, you first look at it and if you don't take the time, uh, then it, it can seem like that. It's big, big sky country. But you love it here, right? I do, yeah. I've, I've been here nearly nine years uh, and it, it takes a wee bit to get used to, uh, but I, I did a wee stint in East Iceland and it is very similar in that it's a big open landscape. I love open landscapes uh, and it is a, an amazing landscape and a privilege to kind of work in it as well.